What's good? Are you rocking with your homie Justin Love? And of course, my dog Jimmy Bell in the building. What up, bro? What's crackling? At least we know you are a DJ and not a singer. Oh wow, man! Just 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 letting it all fly today. Oh. Okay, man. Thought we were better than that. At least some it's been a week, bro. We got to make it up to do. Okay, all right, fair enough. All right, well, let, let's get to it then. Uh, <laughs> Buckeyes, Akron, final score fifty-two to six. Uh, bro, I got to be honest with you. That game is exactly what I thought it was going to be. Um, okay, first be- of all, let's do this. Let's do this first, right. Jay. Okay. What was your prediction? Oh, okay. We gonna go there. All right, let's go there. Uh, <laughs> mine was forty-seven to three. Jimmy's oh, dang, was. We were right in the six, middle. Jimmy's was sixty-five to three. So shout out to the adult that won. It was. But, it was. It was. But was but 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 I got one better. My son, my four and a half month old son, Princeton, predicted fifty-two to ten. So okay, he beat both of us. He beat both okay, of us. Okay, P. Diddy, no Diddy. Yeah, he okay. beat both of us. Yeah, and don't put that on my son. He ain't. That ain't I happen. did. I uh, said no Diddy. <laughs> I said P. Diddy, no Diddy. <laughs> take that. Take that. Oh wait, we don't say that anymore. Never mind. Yeah, whoa, okay. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, we don't say we that don't anymore. We don't use the word P in our house <laughs> at all. Ice, ice. Mm-mm. Only if it's a wet diaper. Only if it's a wet diaper, then we say P. Like, okay, that's a that's a number one. Yeah. Uh yeah. So uh I mean it, it really was though, bro. Like it's exactly what I thought it was gonna be because almost every season opener, people think the Buckeyes are gonna just blow everybody out of the water first quarter, and that never happens. And right. I didn't think it would though, because I mean, honestly, it's it's a new team. You know, they've been playing themselves all year, and now they're playing somebody different. They have to learn how to gel together. You, of course, being a former player, know this more than anybody. Um, and it just kind of made sense to me that it's going to took them a little bit to kind of get into a groove, get into the swang of things. And But once they, they got into their zone, you know, they did their thing. Yeah, g- great observation. It's so crazy how now we talk about the team in, in inference to offense. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? We say, hey, man, yeah. the team, the team is first the offense. Yeah, yeah. Because when I did that, I had a show earlier today, my podcast, mm-hmm. and, and I talked about that. Someone mentioned something, and I said, well, the defense is a collective that have come back. So you got two things. Mm-hmm. You got the defense who have added a couple pieces, but really it's the same foundation. All the fellas just came back. Yeah, right. So right. Offense is, that's a to- you're totally right. Totally, it's a totally different story. different game. Yeah, you have a couple pieces. Yeah, and then the other pieces were filled in through the transfer portal, new guys, right? Uh, and guys who hadn't played before that are getting their opportunity to play. Yeah, so you know, you know, I I I, I agree. I, I probably am a little different from you because I didn't expect anything. I was kind of open to see what mm. the expectation was. Okay, and um, you know. We're going to get better. I think Mm -hmm. we're going to get extremely better. But what you saw, and if that's what you expected, then then we have to get better. And I'm talking Mm -hmm. about in the attitude realm, the toughness realm. Mm -hmm. Whatever we we want to do and what we want to see, Mm -hmm. they got to get it together. That's why experience means everything, Jay, Mm -hmm. when you come into team sports. Yeah. That's why, you know, I always talk about Kyle and I ain't a lover of mm-hmm. Kyle, but I also understand what it what it means to be successful in this flow. Mm-hmm. That, he would have been he would have been more mature. He would have been stronger, tougher, more educated, a better leader. Therefore, at this at the prep, the precipice of the nucleus of your team wouldn't have been start over. Wow. Would have been and, addition. Yeah. But now literally a new quarterback, a new offensive coordinator. New offense alignment. Mm-hmm. You added a new running back, even though we got our other running back back. Right. You, you got one wide receiver coming back with any level of significant playing time, so they're all mm-hmm. new. Yeah. New tight end. You see, right. so everything right. was new. So I think you you got and thought of what you got was literally just a new team. It doesn't matter how much talent you have. Literally, right. How, how does the talent gel together? How do they work together and and, and make the system work? I mean, it's really a tale of two cities, if you will, right? Because offense is one thing, defense is a completely different story. And I mean, 
Bro, like you talk about Kyle. Kyle had a game. He 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 had he balled out this past weekend. And the I don't know you heard, you heard uh Syracuse's coach talking about, hey, I should send Ryan Day some champagne because this dude is is you know is a baller. The bubbly. I mean, I don't know about the bubbly, bro. I mean, he, he's a good quarterback. I've never thought he wasn't, but he just it just didn't everybody um, thought he was no every but that was but that's what that's what my defensive cow was. Yeah. My defensive cow wasn't that he was a Heisman Trophy winner or candidate. My mm-hmm. defensive cow is that he wasn't trash the way everybody was trying to say that he was trash. Well, I think a lot of people said he was trash because he lacked that one thing that quarterbacks have been have had this past what couple of decade or two, and that's the ability to run. Right? I mean, he he's a, more of a pocket passer than he is a runner. So, I mean, now right. I feel like. You yeah. have to you have to add that to your repertoire in order to really be accepted in that role. Now it's kind of it's not fair, but it's what's happened with Justin I mean, and running, Troy and running you know, all those is a guys. Fans' excuse of trying to figure out why a coach and a quarterback and wide receivers can't get on the same page. Think mm-hmm. about CJ CJ Stroud. Okay, everybody talked about how he needed to run, mm-hmm. and I used to say on TV. If if C.J. Stroud's issue is running the ball, then we got bigger problems at the Ohio State University. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Right? He's the best quarterback, and he's one of the top quarterbacks in the NFL, definitely the rookie of the year last year. Yeah. And he ain't running the ball. He wasn't right. a running quarterback, right? Sometimes it's coaching. Sometimes it's, it's – now, mm-hmm. listen, if you understand that you're at a deficit in these areas, then you just got to mm-hmm. be honest. I'm not a good coach. We don't mm-hmm. have a good offensive line and mm-hmm. all of these other things. So we do need the quarterback to run the ball so we can make up for deficiencies. Okay. Right. Make sense? It you know, does. Yeah. You only want your running quarterback to run if he's a running quarterback. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. It makes if your perfect quarterback sense. isn't a running quarterback, then he doesn't need to run to be successful. Yeah. You know, see, you know I, mean, I, I do. And I, I think CJ, I mean, he, he his skill set is well rounded enough to where he could. I mean, I think that's why he he did so well in college and is doing his thing in the pros because he has a skill set where he can run if he needs to, but he's going to pass first and then run second, right? So never ran, never ran. I mean, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I never saw him run much because he was he nope. was so good with the arm. That he ran, it, he ran really in one to. game, and I think that was the, not the national oh, really? game, but in the um. The, the semifinal game, but you're totally he never you're right. ran. You're right. Uh he ran yeah. he ran a little bit. He almost reminded me of Trevor Lawrence's senior year. Or yeah, last that's, year. Yeah, that's a good analogy. Right. Against yeah. us. He threw yeah. the ball all year. He came against us in that last game and he ran and he actually ran so much that it kind of threw us off because he hadn't ran all year. Right. Right. You see what I'm saying? But yeah. you don't have to run the ball to be successful. Now I think I think Will Howard will be successful using his legs because mm-hmm. Chip Kelly's offense is dictated on the probability of that happen, happening. Right. Chip Kelly may be the best thing that happened to Will Howard once he committed to Ohio State. Because mm. you guys remember, Chip Kelly was probably the last addition to this whole fix. Yeah. This is the beauty about Chip. Chip does not need a dual-threat quarterback. That's mm-hmm. not that's not what he's best at. Mm-hmm. He just needs a quarterback that's an athlete. Does that make sense? He's as opposed to the, he's still as opposed the, to a runner. As opposed to a dual threat. Like Cam Newton's a, a flat threat. out dual okay. threat. Okay. Right? You got right. uh Michael Vick, flat out dual threat. Right. Um, you got you know Mariota, who he played with at Oregon. He wasn't yeah. necessarily a dual threat, I wouldn't say. He mm-hmm. was an athletic quarterback. He was a What's the difference? He just so happened to be an athlete. Well, a dual threat quarterback. If you take Cam Newton's numbers, mm-hmm. part of his game is running. If you look at his NFL stats, he has just as many damn rushing yards as he has passing yards, and okay. they're both incredible. Well, a a running athletic quarterback is going to be someone like a Russell Wilson. He doesn't run downfield much. Aaron mm-hmm. Rodgers, he doesn't run downfield much. Mm-hmm. He's just athletic, which means he can get out of the pocket. He can do something. Lamar okay. Jackson, now he's he's going to kind of he's turning into something a little bit morphing different. 
where mm-hmm. he is an athletic, I mean, excuse me, he is a dual threat quarterback that operates more as a quarterback who's an athlete. Okay. He gets loose, man, he's just like one of the best running backs in the league. Yeah, <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. He gets funky, he's right? Incredible. Yeah. Well, Howard is not a running quarterback. He's an athletic, he's a he's a quarterback that just so happens to be an athlete. Okay. And that's going to benefit this whole offense. This is a true story, though. As slow as we started off on Saturday, mm-hmm. I think Will Howard is going to be in that Heisman Trophy room. Really? Yep. Hot hmm. take, baby. Okay. Will Howard okay. will be in that Heisman Trophy room. Jeremiah Smith be right up there with him. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. That's that's a lot. No. Okay. That's okay. that's a lot. You know what I'm okay. saying? We. You know. You know when you play wide receiver. You know the thing about quarterback. There's only one quarterback on the field. When you deal with right. the wide receivers. There could be three or more wide receivers on the field at one time. Yeah, yeah, that's Jeremiah true. Jeremiah Smith yeah. just so happened to be the recipient of the three to four touchdowns this week. We may not even hear anything from him again for the next, yeah. in the next couple of weeks. I mean, Will got you know some options. Saying? Yeah, Will has a lot of options. He has but, a I mean, lot of options. But he, but there, you know, I mean, but there's a reason why I think he singled him out as, as often as he did because he got open more than the other guys, wouldn't you say? Uh, it, it's not. It's not as simple. As that's a reasoning why, it's okay. just that that's what happened that game. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Okay. You have defenses. They may have been predicated on double teaming and triple teaming. Number mm-hmm. two, who's the mm-hmm. senior coming back, right? Mm-hmm. So you never know. You may get to another team, another game, where the other teams, how they're built, may be better to play just straight man-to-man. And who knows who's going to be the guy? You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's not so much. Well, he's obviously the such and such. No, that's another thing about Will, but that's any good quarterback. You're not just singling out any one guy Mm -hmm. if you don't have to. You're getting the ball to the open guy, and that's what Chip Kelly's offense is going to do. Okay, spread it around. He's going to – well, no, he's going to have probably more than – he's his offense is literally predicated on before the huddle, you throw it to this person or this person. Okay. Right. One or two. Okay. Right. So some people, so this is the deal. Sometimes you have pre snap reads where mm-hmm. you come up, you know who you're throwing the ball to. Mm-hmm. Some are post snap reads. Some of these guys can mm-hmm. read the ball enough where they're running their routes and he's responsible for making sure that the ball gets to the right person. Okay. See what I'm saying? Okay. That's why Chip Ke- Kelly's offense is going to be so dynamic. Because I think it's gonna it's gonna eliminate the the huge amount of thinking from Will Howard. He's just gonna go up there, master and learn what he was supposed to master and learn to do, and he's gonna do it mm-hmm. at a very high level because he has super dope people. So it's gonna make his decision making a lot easier because it's already been somewhat decided for him. Faster, if you will. easier, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm, okay. Well, t- talk to me about um, you know, the on the other side of the offense that that running game man uh judkins your thoughts uh interesting <laughs> you know i'm gonna tell you justin one thing that your boy never does is is compare conferences the yeah. reason why i don't care, care compare conferences because as awesome as what people some people think the sec is mm-hmm. they don't have that big 10 dynamic that they have to even consider yeah the same thing when it comes to the big 10 when it comes to other conferences when it comes to teams Man, these teams are different. I don't know how mm-hmm. many, and we can look that up. I don't know how many people people in the stands old misfits, but mm-hmm. I know this. Ohio State is 109 every game. Mm-hmm. Not just the big games. Yeah. Every game. Yeah. You're playing against the top dudes at practice mm-hmm. every game. Yeah. You are literally, and I hate to say this, but it's true. You're everyone's Super Bowl. Mm. Every game, mm. even if you're blowing them out, they're giving you everything, everything they got. Everything they man. got, yeah, yeah, everything yeah, they that's got. true. And yeah. that has to be an adjustment. If you watch Travion Henderson play yet mm-hmm. Saturday, mm-hmm. there was a distinct difference in his speed, mm. his power, mm-hmm. and his explosiveness. Mm-hmm. He looked... He looked like what you would consider the most dynamic dude in the country. That's how he looked. Yeah. Right? Junkins yeah. came in, 
as the best running back in the country from last year coming from the SEC. Right. He didn't look that way. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying it's even fair to compare, and I'm not comparing saying one's trash and one's dope. Right. I am saying there's a glaring difference in the two mm-hmm. running backs. And Travion Henderson showed us why he was recruited as one of the top dudes. He's just been hurt. He looks and, very and, healthy. He looks very spry. Yeah. And he, and he looks like your shoe is on his back, brother. Like, he <laughs> looks like, hey, listen. Yeah. But he's I think that incredible. The, the glaring thing to me, though, was that it was no, noticeable to me how much more efficient um, that Travion was than Judkins. But I feel like Judkins, I don't know, like, I feel like he got more carries than he really should have been given. I feel like they should have put a lot more of that load on Travion because he was a lot more productive than, than Judkins was. Yeah, and again, when you say you should, I understand where you're coming from. Mm-hmm. You have to understand all of these games are different. Right. And it means something different. Okay. So Junkins may have gotten more carries simply because they wanted him to get more comfortable. Okay. Does okay. That makes sense. Th- that's fair. Yeah. Okay. They, they prob- and I'm just talking just from a who knows. They may yeah. have wanted him to 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 see what it felt like to carry this type of load behind this type of backfield okay. with you know coming people coming at you this way. Okay. Like I said. If we needed to see something from Travion, we saw it. Like he looked, mm-hmm. he looked, he looked as dynamic as any running back we have seen. Yeah, and we had seen that in a couple of years. Yeah, because he's because he's been hurt. Right. So right. maybe that's a great observation that you had, but maybe considering they just they just was kind of riding him a little bit, just giving him reps, give him some okay. reps, let him get comfortable, let him feel the flow. It's what they do when they play these non-conference games and the end of the game, they put in that second and third stream. Let me get them some reps, get them on the field, kind of get them comfortable kind of thing. Is that, is that what, kind of what you're saying? Yeah, I do. Yeah. But I, I don't want to, I don't want to, 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 to downgrade. And I know you're not, we're not doing that, but I don't want to downgrade him to the second team. He's right. But the same, same concept reps. though. Same concept. We need to yeah. get him more reps. Right. Right. Okay. We need him to feel this, to feel this flavor more. We need to feel him these, give yeah. him this expectation of what's coming more because listen, that's Akron and they actually mm-hmm. had a pretty deep and decent, decent bits of line and mm-hmm. they were coming. It's going to get, it's going to get hotter in the trenches. Yeah. And I think that's a lot of what I've heard everybody say since Saturday is that, that, that O line is really was in question. Um, I mean, you know, you're, you're a, what, what are your thoughts? It, it, yeah, the question was the question. What what the hell are y'all doing? Like, what, 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 right. <laughs> what the the question is the goddamn question. What the yeah. hell have y'all been doing? Yeah. Uh, you know, if if it's if it's one, um, I don't make a lot of excuses for offensive line mm-hmm. because I don't understand at any level, minus high school. High school's different, mm-hmm. where the guys can't get together. And come together mm-hmm. to kick tail on the front, knowing that you're part of the front end, right? Yeah, that's yeah. why you celebrate really dope offensive lines. And for me, I really don't have a whole lot of tolerance for offensive lines that can't come together as a group mm-hmm. and look. How about this? Look as dominant as their potential dictates. Yeah, yeah. And and, and I think that toughness thing, man. I don't know what it is, and I'm not not saying tough as in. I'm challenging their acumen or challenging their heart mm-hmm. level or challenging their manhood. Yeah. I mean, the toughness of just getting it done as a group. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The offensive yeah. line believes they're the toughest SOBs on the planet in every mm-hmm. locker room. Mm-hmm. They think they're the smartest, mm-hmm. and they do think that they're, they're, they're arrogant from a position of, I'm bigger and I'm stronger than you, and I okay. can do you against your will <laughs> at any time. Okay, so they bully. They kind of they kind of carry themselves like bullies. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Nerd right. bullies. Okay. Right? No, so when you, yeah. So the the worst the offensive lineman has that attitude. Mm-hmm. So so for some reason, you know, the past couple of years we just haven't looked like we've we've gelled and meshed enough for them to have the confidence as a group mm-hmm. to, to to get that bully on, and that's what I'm does, looking. For. Does that does that fall back on the O line coach? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. and I'm not yeah. saying it's because he's a bad old line co- or, or any offensive line coach is a bad coach. But mm-hmm. if 
if I'm if my responsibility is to lead and manage a particular person or particular group and get a point across, yeah, in, in my best efforts, if it's not getting to them, then that means that that I'm not doing my job well. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, it makes perfect. So somehow sense. I'm not getting through to the to whomever I need to get my point across to, so they can articulate and regurgitate what you're trying to get them to do. And that's what it's been with this offensive line. And it's not just last mm-hmm. last last Saturday. It was kind of this way last year also. And we look at we look at the other side of the ball and that that D the D line, they they were funky. They were doing what they needed Finally. to do. They they were doing their thing. Yeah. And Listen. then, you know, and those two defensive touchdowns, man, I mean, that was that's the kind of stuff we've been looking for. We bounced. We looked just like I say with Travion, we looked we looked aggressive. We looked mm-hmm. solid and strong. Yeah. We looked athletic and we made plays. We didn't yep. just make the plays. We looked to make the plays. Yeah. Last year, I, I don't know how many sacks we had last year. We didn't have many. Um, mm-hmm. and, and the key to a lot of defenses and defensive line is that can you get pressure without linebacker blitzing and without quarter blitzing? Okay. And this year, excuse me, this Saturday or previous Saturday, mm-hmm. I saw it. Mm-hmm. Sawyer, he looked like he was getting after it. Now, he didn't have a sack. The mm-hmm. interior lineman had a couple sacks. JT mm-hmm. had a couple sacks. The linebacker had a couple sacks. Um, linebacker had a scoop, had two picks. Yes. Yeah. The defensive backs had two picks. So we were we were bouncing. And I got and I have to give a lot of credit to the to the defensive coordinator mm-hmm. for going through two years of adjusting it himself. Mm. Because coming from the Big 12, he hasn't seen this. Yeah. He hadn't seen what he was getting into. Yeah. And it was and it was evident. The first year we were little, we were better, but we were still shaky. Still shaky. Second yeah. year we were solid. We were confident and solid, but we weren't making any plays. Right, 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 right. Saturday, they took it to another level. They made some plays. Yep, you dag on right. So, uh, Sunny Styles, middle, middle, middle linebacker. I mean, will linebacker, not middle. He's the will linebacker. Oh, I thought it was a middle. Okay, okay, so, okay. Which is going to be interesting because you, we still got C.J. Hicks coming back. Right, right, right. But Sonny looked good. He yeah. was a little hesitant. He didn't look yeah. super linebacker aggressive. So this thing is new to him. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's playing. Right. It, it, this is his first game playing mm-hmm. linebacker. But I think he'll get better. He looks yeah. like a freaking monster Greek, excuse me, a monster African Alcalbalon warrior man out there i mean wow. he's six five six four six five lean mean yeah running around there like a safety because that's really what he is that's what he is yeah yeah i think what once he starts to get settled and start making play this is the difference between making plays jay just to be honest with you mm-hmm. when you're on the field you have an assignment okay you're responsible for doing exactly what the coach is telling you to do mm-hmm. right that's mm-hmm. doing your job Yep. Ballers make plays. Mm-hmm. The coach told me to do this, but I'm going to make the play. Mm. I've studied enough. I've I'm instinctual enough that I know down in distance personnel such and such. When I played with Junior Seau, that's what he did in San Diego. Okay. He's so smart, based upon down in distance personnel, he would abort his responsibility to go make a play mm. because he knew where the ball was going to go. Mm. Right. I'm not telling people to abort what they're supposed to do, but I am saying there's a difference from doing exactly what the coach is telling you to do mm-hmm. to to making that next level to do what the coach is telling you to do and then go make a play. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep, makes perfect sense. Okay. Yeah, so Sonny's a Sonny's gonna be a he's gonna be a he's gonna be a special one. But I think that linebacking core is incredible. I, I th- yeah. They may be the most deep that we have on that field right now. Yeah, yeah. Players no, the wide agree. receivers. Wide receivers are super deep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The um spread is uh over under is fifty four this Saturday with uh Western Michigan. Um oh yeah, we're gonna knock that out the park. If I'm not I, mistaken, Western Western I, Michigan's defense is absolutely trash. Yeah, I think I was kind of surprised to see that. Um but they score points though. Yeah. That's the key. They score points. That's mm-hmm. the little bit of the uh the interesting part so um they score points mm-hmm. they give them up though 
what's what's your what's your prediction? I'm gonna go. Fifty two to seven. No, fifty no. Fifty six to ten. There you go. Fifty six ten. Yep. Fifty six ten. Fifty five to ten. I'm going fifty five to ten. Fill it in my bone. And I just did the calculation. I told y'all I got the calculation. Bomb. You got the calculation, and everything. <laughs> we do it right in front of y'all every week. So fifty five to ten. You got 5510, I got 5610. Okay, okay. Sir. Okay. It's gonna be a good game. Night game. Yeah. Our yeah, night sir. games are dope. They're night long, games are crazy. They're dope. Right. <laughs> Anything else about come out at night, Jay. I know you're gonna You be ain't there. lying. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway. Um <laughs> but anyway, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I mean, I mean, is there anything about Western Michigan that stands out to you though? Besides, you know, their their good offense and their not so, you know, exciting defense. No, that gives them a shot. Year. They just yeah. got some. They, they got good coaching. They have a good system. They've been mm. putting some points up, but they don't have anything, uh, anyone or anything that we talk about from a particular perspective. But okay. this is the deal: when when teams play Ohio State. Maybe maybe next week we'll pick a mission. We'll we'll pick. This is what we'll do. We'll watch mm -hmm. the game, mm -hmm. and let's come back with a Western Michigan player that made his name based upon that game. Let's okay. Go. Okay. Let's do that. All right. So you, Jimmy got fifty five ten. J Love got fifty six ten. Uh, Princeton will give his prediction the day of the game. I'm sorry, he he doesn't talk before. Uh, he actually doesn't even talk at all, but he beat both of us last weekend, so there's that. <laughs> That's Princeton what's up. non pre diddy That's how we want to <laughs> Princeton no diddy You dang all right. JB, what's happening with you this weekend, man? Uh, hey, guys, I'll be at Gala Park. I have a podcast every Monday and Thursday on tkdssports.tv. Also kind of stream it on Instagram. I'm excuse me, on Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. But what we do, we take my big man, Doug Worthington. If I think I'm big, I think he's bigger than me. And, some, and uh, so we go to Gallup Park an hour before the game. We do our party tailgate thing. We have a good mm -hmm. time. We interact with the crowd. You know, we do a little analyst work. Music is playing. Um... You know, the people do what they do with their libations. You know, I personally drink unsweetened <laughs> People ice. do what they do. Okay. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right, right. I, I, uh, some people put get the cup and do that. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I just do unsweetened iced tea. You know what I'm saying, J-Love? Hey, 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 man. Shout out to that cranberry and Sprite. I, that's what, that's, that's my, hey, my drinking choice. I always have, nothing, always will nothing be. Nothing like 6'6", six, six, 350 pounds and pure. <laughs> <laughs> well i'm 510 so there's that all right ben all right oh my gosh i uh so social media platforms all that stuff bro how how, how great's happening hey facebook jimmy bell also jimmy excuse me the know-it-alls jimmy bell empowers instagram jimmy bell empowers check your boil out if you guys have any questions if you guys have any opinions and jay love me or jay love mm -hmm. make sure you hit us up We'll address some of those things. I love to do crowd interaction. 